you're finding your confidence, you're finding your voice, you're figuring out who you want to be in the world, what you think, what you believe, all of those things, which is so rich. And at the same time, it's a little hard for parents. Mom definitely has a bit of a problem with that. <laughs> like, even yesterday, she was telling me that like, she doesn't like the fact that we don't really need her as much anymore as we mm. grow up. <laughs> but I do. I feel like I'm losing you. Hey, everybody, and welcome to The Paula Ferris Show. I'm your host, Paula Ferris. And today we are talking about how we can connect with our moody teenage and tween daughters. This is a really special episode because it's with Sissy Goff, who is a renowned child therapist and also my teenage daughter, Caroline. And before you react to the title of the episode, How to Connect with Your Moody Teenage Daughters, uh, Caroline came up with it. So that's on her. <laughs> and she's also going to share what she wants every parent of teenagers to know in this conversation. And I've been so expectant for this conversation because to be honest, I've felt really helpless at times in how to connect with her. And it starts early. It's starting earlier and earlier. The tween years are eight to 12. Um, I'm sure you can relate, like who just possessed my daughter? Why is there a demon in her? Why? It's like almost overnight, they're a different person. But how can we connect? How do we get them to put their phones down? How do we uh, get them out of their rooms? And I'm also sad because I feel like I'm losing her. Uh, yeah, I cried in this conversation. I'm not a crier, but it's been tough. Yes, you want your kids to spread their wings and fly. But I think at the core, every parent or mom wants to feel needed, right? So that's why I invited Sissy to give us some hope, to guide us in how we can raise our daughters and assure us that we're not alone because friends, we are not alone. We're not, we're going through this together. So we're gonna dig into what she calls the narcissistic years, the anxiety that our girls are carrying and how we can best support them. Plus there's a reason why daughters typically take things out on their mothers. Parents, I encourage you to listen or watch this with your daughter. So without further ado, here's Sissy and Caroline. Sissy! Paula! This is so exciting. Oh, I'm so excited to be with the two of you. Caroline, I'm so happy to meet you. I've heard such amazing things about you. Hi, it's nice to meet you too. Thank you. Sissy and I are coming in hot right now. <laughs> that okay, is for mother. sure. I think you're just a little more chill than the two of us. That's all. So. <laughs> I am not chill. I am not chill either. So, Sissy, well, I want you to meet. I'm not chill. I was about to say, Caroline, I want to hear your thoughts on your mom being chill. Mom is definitely I'm not. not chill. <laughs> I'm like not chill. The opposite. Fire well, ready. Me That's too. what you always say. Fire aim ready. She she knows me well. So Sissy, let me formally introduce you to my my dearest daughter, my only daughter, 16-year-old Caroline. Caroline, meet Miss Sissy Goff. She is a renowned child and adolescent therapist. And she's gonna fix all of our problems today. <laughs> I feel confident y'all don't have any. So I wanted to have this conversation uh because it is so hard to relate to a teenager in general. But and I hear this from my friends all the time, Sissy, relating to our teen daughters. And so what I want to do today, Caroline, I want you to tell us what you want us to know about what it's like to be a teenage girl in, in today's world, how we can best support you. Sissy, I want you to tell all the parents and grandparents and anybody that has a teenage daughter or a daughter or a girl in their life. I want you to help us to understand how to raise girls. And I know you've written several books on it, but I just want you to give us some hope, maybe some some guardrails. And I want people listening to not feel so alone because mm. raising teenagers, raising daughters in general can feel very isolating and lonely at times. So that's what I hope people get out of today. Well, it is an honor to be with you all and I hope they get the same thing. And Caroline, I'm so excited. I mean, I'm going to have to take my counselor hat off because as your mom's talking, there are so many things I want to ask you. Like, what are you thinking about what she's saying? Yeah. So we'll just go wherever. I'm excited to have this conversation. Can you tell us what's going on? So Caroline's 16. Um, the teenagers obviously start at age 13, but the tween years start ages 8 through 12. Can you tell yes. us what's going on right now? in the life of a teenager, what it's like and, you know, kind of what they're dealing with. And then Caroline, oh, our dog. Sorry, is Addie's barking. 
That is okay. I love that Addie's there. I have mine too, Caroline, who could say hi to Addie easily. What kind is Addie? She's a mini Cavapoo. Aww. She's like five pounds. So. Oh, that's awesome. Mine's like seven pounds. She's a Havanese. Here, I'll get her. Oh. Addie's very sassy. She a- Addie and Lucy can say hi to each other. <gasps> oh, they are so cute. They're friends. Cute. <laughs> Wait, it's what is your what is her name? Your dog's name again? Mine's Lucy, and she counsels with me every day. She's been counseling girls for fifteen years. Oh, that's great! There and there is a, some truth to having an animal as therapy too. Absolutely, yes. We could talk about that all day in the lives yeah. of girls. I'm yeah. a huge proponent for dogs. Aww. Okay, but I got a, got us off track because I got so excited about Addie. So. <laughs> Okay, and Caroline, I want you to weigh in what you think about this. I'm going to give a little bad news first and then some good news. Caroline is living in the good news, which is great. So if we were going to break down girls and development, I would consider 11 to 14, 15, 16. I think, Caroline, you're mostly out of this. And I this this word's going to sound harsh to you, but look, give me a minute, okay? okay? So I would consider those years the narcissistic years. Which means not that you're just totally (laughs) selfish, but in that window, you're thinking about yourself a lot. You're thinking about what other people are thinking about you. How does what you're wearing look to other people? How do they feel like you're doing and whatever it is you're doing? How are you coming across on social media? All that stuff. And really, Mm. the purpose of that is because to become your own person, you have to put a lot of thought into it. And so... We jokingly call it those years, but mostly because I want parents in that window of time to feel like, okay, where my daughter is, is normal. This does not mean there's some inherent personality disorder that's going to crop up. That makes me feel so much better. I thought that there was something wrong. Like why or why? (laughs) And Caroline, this is not a knock on you, but like, why does it feel like they're so self-absorbed? Yes. Normal. Caroline, my sister is 16 years younger than I am. And it's just the two of us. And isn't that crazy? Yeah. I was, I was super shocked when my parents got pregnant. You can imagine. (laughs) I remember telling my sister that I was coming home for our grandmother's funeral when she was 13. Our grandmother lived with she and my mom. They were super close. And her first response was, Oh, good. You'll get to meet Bo, my boyfriend. (laughs) I mean, it was like, Oh, no, no, no. This is about our grandmother. It's not about you, but that's just where she went in that Uh moment. So it is super normal. Did it feel kind of like that to you, Carolyn? Like you were thinking about yourself and what other people thought about you all the time? Yeah, I think I would think a lot about like the way other people saw me. Yeah. And just especially when I was a little bit younger, I cared a lot about like what people thought about me. I've kind of grown out of that a little bit because yeah, yeah, I just... I've learned to be more confident in the way I am and I don't need other people's validation to like love myself. So she's got that that amazing statement. Caroline, I love hearing you say that because I think that's such a picture of the good news that we move into in your Mm -hmm. stage of development that we call the autonomous years, because you are, you're finding your confidence, you're finding your voice, you're figuring out who you want to be in the world, what you think, what you believe, all of those things, which is so rich. And at the same time, it's a little hard for parents because you're becoming your own person. Yeah. Mom definitely has a bit of a problem with that. (laughs) Yesterday, she was telling me that like, she doesn't like the fact that we don't really need her as much anymore as we grow up. And that is hard. You know, my kids are 16, 14 and nine. And Caroline, you said the other day, you love Landon the most right now. He's our youngest because he needs you. And he's always sitting on my lap. Something I haven't told you this, something that happened um, not too long ago. I was at Landon's basketball game and I saw a younger family with um, there were a couple of little girls when they were all dressed up in their cute little outfits, right? Because that's what little girls do. They dress up in their outfits and they go everywhere in them. And in the middle of the game, I just started crying because I feel like it wasn't that long ago that you were that little girl. And Mm. now you're in high school. And I do, I, I struggle because I feel like you don't need me anymore. And yes, we want our kids to spread their wings and fly. I do. I want that for you, but it's still hard because I still want to feel needed, but I've got to let you go. But it hurts because I feel like you don't need me anymore. And that's something that I'm struggling with. And I don't know if that's normal. 
I cry a lot about it. I do. Mm. I feel like I got two more years with you and I've got four more years with your with JJ and Landon's going to be here forever because he'll probably live in our basement, like you said. So, um, (laughs) but I do, I feel like I'm losing you. And I know that's part of the process. Well, and Paula, I would say that means you did your job. That means you've done your job well, that she feels confident enough to not need you as much. And it doesn't take away the pain of it, but it is certainly true. Is it because they say you lose your kid when they go to college? I feel like I've already lost her, though. I just I just don't feel like she needs me. And it's, it's, that's hard for a parent. And I know, Caroline, you're probably super uncomfortable right now. But yeah. again, <laughs> I know I know all these things. I know the goal is for her to like spread her wings and fly. But I don't know if I'm ready for it. Oh, no. Well, I just would say on the other side of that, Paula, mm-hmm. I can't tell you how often I sit with parents of college age girls who say, I didn't think I would talk to her very much at all. And she calls me all the time, everywhere she's going in the grocery store, trying to find the turkey. I don't know where the turkey is in her town in the grocery store, but she calls me for that. And, and moving into adulthood, I think mother daughter relationships, you will be the best of friends forever. Mm -hmm. This is just a window where you have to give her a little bit more rope, trusting that she's going to come back and that, that need and love aren't equal. Yeah, that's so true. Yeah. But do you feel like I give you enough rope, Caroline? What can I do better? Because I want to know how to best support you, too. Do I give you enough? Because I know you're like, Mom, I I feel like I'm a lot and I feel like you don't need me as much. And that's normal. But do I give you enough? Like, what can I do better? I think that you do a pretty good job of giving me space and giving me like room to do these things that I need to do to be able to grow up. Mm -hmm. I feel like you give me a lot of freedom. And with that freedom, I get a lot of responsibility, obviously. Mm -hmm. And taking on that responsibility, it's helped me to, I mean, mature a lot. So you're doing a good job at that. For now. Um, And can I pause you and say, I hope every parent asks their kids that question. I mean, you made me so teary, y'all, having that conversation just then, because I think... Where's my Kleenex, by the way? I did not bring any (laughs) tissues. If we were in my office, I'd have them. (laughs) But I think for parents to say, what can I do better? How can I help you see that I see that you're growing up, that I trust you? Because... You know, we could talk about, and Caroline, I'm sure you have so many friends who are anxious and dealing with anxiety. And I think Mm -hmm. part of that is not feeling capable. The more responsibility, the more freedom you give kids that are age appropriate, I think the more competent and confident they feel, which is Caroline, I think back to where you are. That's so beautiful. Yeah. I do have a lot of people like my friends and people my age, I know who struggle with a lot of these not like mental illnesses, but, you know, like anxiety, depression, things. And I think it's really just part of growing up. Like we're dealing with a lot as a lot. We have a lot of stuff that's changing as we're getting older. And sometimes that's hard to deal with. A lot of people don't like change. So, you know, how do, how do you think if you could right now speak to parents out there who, don't understand what's going on with their daughters or teen daughters for that matter. And if you could kind of advocate for your own generation, like how do you feel misunderstood as a teenager? What are you going through and what do you want adults in your life to know about how we can best help you? But how do you feel most understood and what can we do? Well, I mean, for me and my situation with you, I know this isn't like how it is for a lot of teenage girls, but it's like what we have going on and what we've been struggling with is mom just wants to be with our family all the time. Like every chance she can get, she always wants to be with us. And it would be like after a long day at school and I'd have a lot of tests and I'd really just want to like go to my room, take a shower because I was tired. And I know it's been a long time since you were a teenager. mom. (laughs) (laughs) But no, I think a lot of parents don't understand that when you're my age, I mean, we get tired really quickly. We have a lot on our plates. 
And we're learning to manage all of that. So sometimes we just need time to reset and rest. And I'm sure you've heard of what like a social battery because we're with mm-hmm. people all day, like every day at school. And sometimes we just want to be alone. At least I know that's how it is for me. I can't mm-hmm. speak for everybody. How can we best meet you there? Um, I think like when I ask for space, just not like fighting me on that and just giving me the space because it's not just when I'm with family. Like if I'm with anyone for like a long period of time, you're going to get like not sick of them, but things are going to like boil up little things. Like even if I was with my friends like all the time or they were constantly asking to like hang out or something like that, I'd get like annoyed because I'm like, I just want to be alone sometimes. I need time to recharge. Okay. I had a girl one time who said to me, I need space doesn't mean let's now have a conversation about why I need space. <laughs> yeah. Good. But how do we reconcile that, sissy? Because I I hear that and I want to give her space, but I also feel like I want my time too. Like so how how can I do that in a respectful way? Where and how can parents do that in a respectful way? I saw a couple of things. I feel like all my parenting tips come from Instagram these days. And it said, you know, your daughter, go to your daughter's room. We know the door is going to be shut. Bring her some of her favorite snacks. When the snacks are done, leave the room gracefully, but meet them where they're at. Is that what I'm supposed to do is just meet her where she's at? Carolina, I would ask you that. What do you think? I think meeting me where I'm at, that would be a good idea what you said with the bringing in snacks or something, or like you did yesterday, I was upstairs, I was watching a show and you were, you came up to me and said, do you want to like go get gas with, I can fill up your car. We can just go and hang out for a little bit. Yeah. But I I had to bribe you to spend time (laughs) by filling up your tank. (laughs) You didn't even fill up my tank. We didn't even get gas yesterday because you just went and got left and then we got dinner. (laughs) We did. We did get dinner, but I said, yeah. we'll fill up your tank later, but yeah. Yeah. I, one thing I recommend to moms and girls really of all ages is to find a show you can watch together. Mm-hmm. Something that you can do that you don't have to be talking because I think, especially when time is limited as adults, we end up using a lot of words in that time. It's yeah. like, I don't have much time with her. So I have a lot of teaching I have to get in. And so I'm going to talk and talk and talk and talk. And they need time that we're just enjoying them, that we're sitting with them, giving them space to be wherever they are. And so good. finding something like that, that you can be like, hey, Thursday night, let's go watch Gilmore Girls or, or whatever it is. Caroline, I want you to, I'm going to probably say this more directly than you would say, and you correct me if this isn't right. But I think there's something about adolescence that feels awkward about intimacy with parents. And so when we're super direct, like we haven't had any time together, I'd like to spend some time with you. I think they want to run from the, for the hills. And so mm-hmm. we need to come up with a little more, we call it backdoor, but like a little more sideways attempts to connect where it's and often around enjoying whatever they enjoy is going to be one of the best ways to do it. Not feel so needy, maybe Caroline. Do I feel needy to you? It's okay if you say yes. Just a little bit. Sometimes. <laughs> I know we we got into a little bit of a fight yesterday because it's Christmas break for us. And I've pretty much been home all weekend. Like I haven't left the house. And when I leave the house, it's with them. And I went to my room or I was watching my show and mom was getting annoyed because I wasn't with her. And I just don't think you understood that. I had given you so much time already and you still wanted more right? and made me think Mm -hmm. like, is what I'm giving you not enough? Mm -hmm. Well, we did this, Sissy. We started watching a new series as a family, which it's so hard when you have kids that are all over the spectrum. Like our our nine-year-old can't watch the same kind of shows that Caroline can watch. Um, So, but we we settled on a show, but I got really annoyed because Caroline was like, taking her little snaps and photos. And I was like, can you not put your phone away for 30 minutes to... And so this is something I hear from a lot of parents. Even when we're with them, we don't feel like they're with us. They're not connecting. Mm. It, are, are we in the wrong for feeling like that? I mean, should we just give them their space or at, should we 
should we demand that they be present with us and tell them, hey, you got to put your phone down when we're watching this show? Or do we just accept that this is their way of staying connected and this is what they this is all they can give us? Because that happened. We got in a, a little bit of a, a beef about it, Caroline, you and I. Can and I give were- a little bit of background context? <laughs> <laughs> this no. was on Sunday. That day, woke up. We all went to church together. After church, we all went to lunch together. After lunch, we all went home and I was upstairs watching a show and my mom and dad, we were all upstairs watching a show. I wasn't on my phone. I wasn't on my phone at church. I wasn't on my phone at lunch. And we watched the volleyball national championship game. I wasn't on my phone and I was building our Lego set because mom, she essentially bribed me. She told me that if I finished like four of these Christmas Lego sets, she'd give me like 40 bucks or something. She's trying to make money and they take like hundreds of hours to build. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I wasn't on my phone then. I was going to have some like alone time later in the day because I had wanted to watch like one of my shows and I was taking my shower and mom calls me and she's like, Hey, we're going to watch a show as a family right now. And I had already been planning to like do my own thing, but I was like, sure. I had some of my friends who were texting me and I mean, I was going to text back because I mean, I'm not just going to leave my friends like on delivered. I'm not sure if you know. Yeah. Yeah. And she was getting annoyed. It's like when you've seen the text, but you're not responding, like you're leaving. Oh, okay. Yes. I know that. I get annoyed by that too. Yeah. She was getting annoyed anytime I'd go on my phone and I was just thinking to myself, I've been with you all day. Can I not just be on my phone for a little bit? Like, I'm not, I'm not a screenager. Like I'm not, (laughs) just give me my time when I ask for it. Fair enough. I think I was just building up that moment. Like, I didn't care if you were on your phone watching volleyball. I didn't care if you were on your phone at those other times, but we had this carved out. We're going to watch the show as a family. And so I guess I just have to maybe pick my moments. Yeah. Because you are, you're a good kid, Caroline. And I don't know if I tell you that enough. You're a really great daughter. I'm not a perfect mom. You, that's like, we live in our imperfection. So I'm grateful for you. Thanks. So what y'all just did is what I would recommend. Just talk about it and see if you can get to a compromised place because it's both things. I mean, of course you feel that way and Mm -hmm. she needs time and space to connect with her friends because they are right now, as I bet Mm -hmm. they were with you, Paula, her priority. And that doesn't mean she doesn't adore you, but that's just developmentally normal and appropriate in the individuating. And so I want to recommend two things. One is my favorite word when it comes to parenting adolescence is breezy. I mean, so instead of coming across as needy, if you can come across as breezy where there's not that intensity, I think the connection is going to be easier and more natural. So that's one thing. The other is there's nothing breezy about me. That's the problem. There's nothing (laughs) I, but I think you can practice it. We can all I learn guess. new skills. Yeah, it's neuroplasticity. We can all do it. But the other thing that I would recommend really to y'all, but to any family of adolescents, I love the Enneagram. It is not the end all be all, but it is a great mm-hmm. tool to understand each other. And I mean, Caroline, as you're talking, I'm I'm kind of guessing in my head which numbers you might be, which I would never want to do out loud. Guess. No, oh, no, no, no. I'm not going to do it. You have to. I think she's a three wing four. Really? Yes. Am I totally off? Have you done it, Caroline? I've done it. Yeah. Wait, did you just say I'm a two or four? Three, wing you're four. A three, which is like the high achiever. And then the, you still like the four is like, I still want to be unique. The creator. I think I took it like a year or two ago and I got one and three. Huh? What do you, what what would you think? Eight, if you can't tell. I'm a total eight hardcore. So that, like you're I said, you're such a warm, kind eight. Thank you. I feel like I'm... Well, you don't live with her. (laughs) (laughs) That's interesting. Caroline, I'd be curious for you to take it again. See, where I would maybe differ with what you said, and obviously, Caroline, I just met you, but the... One of the ways that I love it is there are stances. I don't know if y'all have heard that part of it. There's the dependent stance, the withdrawing stance, and the aggressive stance. And Caroline, you don't feel aggressive stance to me. 
if I had to guess. Uh, and, you don't live with her. Right. <laughs> I had a feeling you were going to say that. Three sevens and eights are in the aggressive stance. Ones are not. But I don't know. See, that I just think we can have conversations about what each other need that are different and not sometimes they don't feel as pointed because it's yes. not like, here's what you're doing wrong or here's what I'm doing wrong. It's more because I'm a whatever number, this is what yeah. I need or this is mm-hmm. what would help me. Mm-hmm. So I'd love for y'all to do it again. And then I want to hear, Caroline, if you're a one, I want to connect with you about it because that's what I am. And it's not very fun to be a one. It's hard. Mm-mm. Caroline is a perfectionist though. So I... But she's also a, like a super high achiever. I tell her all the time. And her brother calls her a tryhard. Like you don't have to, you don't have to get an A plus in every single class. Like it's okay. Get a B. It's fine. Yeah. I'm not getting a B in a class. That's not going to happen. <laughs> she like, she puts a lot of pressure on herself. You might be a one. Achieve. Maybe she is. Do you get mad at yourself a lot? Like, do you have a, they call it an inner critic. Do you have a voice in your head that's telling you you're doing the wrong thing a lot? Yeah. See, I don't think threes have that quite as much. Okay. I would lean towards maybe you're a one. You're probably you. You know what? You're the the therapist. I well, um, I trust you. No, I you do. you live with your daughter. I've spent five minutes with her, but <laughs> that to me is the biggest distinction of is that voice loud in your head or yeah. not? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Sissy, you said mm-hmm. something that gave me a little bit of reassurance. You said when boys do something wrong, they blame somebody else. When girls do something wrong... Or when something wrong happens, they blame themselves, but they often yes. lash out at their mothers. Can yes. you talk about that dynamic? Because I feel like I've always been a safe place and we've had a great relationship, but it's not until like the last couple of years where, I mean, we we got into the worst fight ever over Taylor Swift tickets. And I said some potty words and I was <laughs> the least yeah. healthy version of myself. We live in a, a very grace-filled home where we're like, we're all going to screw up, but we're quick to say we're sorry and we're very quick to forgive one another. But I feel a lot of tension in our relationship that I hadn't, you know. Hmm. And so tell me a little bit about that. Like, is this normal that girls take it out on their moms? Yes. And moms internalize and we feel sorry for ourselves? <laughs> Yes. I read years ago that I thought was fascinating that it did. It's a study that said when something goes wrong in a boy's world, he blames someone else. When something goes wrong in a girl's okay. world, she blames herself. Got it. And I think the one caveat to that is girls do feel safest with moms. And so mm-hmm. I think all of the... I love you, Caroline. I think all <laughs> of the blaming ourselves, that critical voice for girls mm-hmm. comes out at moms. And so when, Mm -hmm. when she's saying negative things to you about you, it's more of what she's feeling about herself. And the hardest part of that, I think, and I do a lot of parenting conferences and talk a lot about raising girls. And I always say, if there's anything I want moms to hear from me, this is what I want moms to hear the most. You as a mom are a grown up little girl. And so when something goes wrong in your world, you blame yourself too. Mm -hmm. And the reality is up until this point, In adolescence, she has, you have been the person she's most closely identified herself with. And so for her to become her own person, it's like a pendulum and she's got to kick off of you the hardest. But because you blame yourself, your first thought is going to be, what have I done wrong? Why does she hate me? How did I make this happen in her relationship? And instead, I would want you to think, sissy told me this is normal. She has to do this to become her own person because she does. We all did it, but it is so hard. And that ha- that starts to happen when they're in the narcissistic years. So they're kind of oblivious yeah. a lot of the time that it's even what's going on internally with you. And at the same time, I think if we go back to what we were talking about before, I think if as a mom, every time she pulls away, you crumble, I think girls start to feel too much power and too much power puts a strain on your relationship and can Uh, even make girls feel insecure. I was doing a seminar one time locally in Nashville. And a lot of times I'll take older kids with me to do a Q and a, I was speaking to seventh grade moms. I think seventh grade is the hardest stretch by far. You know, Anne Lamott says that seventh grade is like the descent into hell. The apostles creed talks about (laughs) Jesus doing, which I love. It's so, so true. So I was speaking to these seventh grade moms and I took some seniors in high school with me to give them some hope. And I remember one of the moms saying, tell me one of your favorite things your mom ever did when you were a teenager. 
And this girl said, well, my mom and I would fight a lot at that age, which again is really normal. And she said, every time we would get in a fight, I would say to my mom, why do you always have to be the parent? Why can't you just be my friend? And she said, every time I said that to my mom, my mom's response was the same. And she would say, there will be a day that you and I will be friends, but it is not today. Mm. And I could actually care less how you feel about me right now. And the girl said, every time my mom said that, I thought, I can't wait. And the mom in the audience said, did you tell your mom that? And she said, of course not. So (laughs) you're not going to know that that's true. But that's that sense of security in knowing you're bigger and stronger than she is. It doesn't mean you just let her run all over you all the time. Sorry, Carolyn. Not that you would do that. But, But I think that sense of security that comes in knowing that you're strong enough to take it. You're the grown up. Mm, and I shouldn't crumble. Do I crumble a lot in front of you? Um, Sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> I'd say a lot of the times I fight with you more than I fight with anybody. Mm-hmm. Like I don't fight with dad really ever. Cause dad's just a voice of reason. Like he, <laughs> The, I can't tell you the last time I saw him get like actually angry when he wasn't coaching basketball. Right. But I think you and I, we both just like to fight. <laughs> and since I don't, I'm not really a confrontational person, like with my friends, I don't start fights with my friends. I think I start fights with you because I'm taking out like my anger at other people and I'm taking it out on you. Mm, it's not because any, it's not necessarily anything to do with you. It's just, I don't have anywhere else and I don't want to bottle it up, Mm. you know? And do you feel like she's safe for you? Like she's going to love you no matter what? Yeah. And I think (laughs) that's part of the reason why I do it is because I know we can get into fights and we'll probably be fine. Like in an hour, Mm -hmm. we work through it. We do. That, See, we I mean, fight. We're, we're quick to fight, but we also say sorry, which is something that's been hard for me because I'm learning that I'm a bit of a prideful person. So it's kind of hard for me to say sorry sometimes mm-hmm. when I know I'm in the wrong because like, you know, yeah. but I'm learning to do that. And that Way saying go, sorry Caroline. doesn't make me like any weaker, mm-hmm. just, you know. There's the perfectionist, but that's where I like the one thing I want to give the kids is, yes, I want them to fail and learn from that and be resilient, but I want them to know that we're all imperfect. We're all going to make mistakes. And when we do, we have to be quick to say, I'm sorry. And on the other side, quick to forgive. And so, because I'm a hot mess and I, I'm glad that you picked that up, that not just am I a hot mess, but we're going to work through it. Right. And we're not going to hold a grudge against one another. There's a lot for us to unpack there. And I know personally, I want to work on being a breezier parent, as Sissy said, be breezy because I can be a lot. I really can. I can come in hot, um, but I'm going to try to be breezy, make that connection more natural and easy. And the Enneagram, I'm going to have Caroline take it again. I think it's really great to connect with your daughter and figure out where they land on this personality test. I'm a huge believer in it. It's helped me to be more aware of how I can come across. But uh, I'll have a link to the Enneagram test and also all the resources that that Sissy mentioned, plus her books and her website in the show notes. So next week, Sissy and Caroline and I are back. We are going to answer all of your questions. There were so many questions and there was so much interest in this topic. That's why I'm breaking it up into two parters. But part two next week, it's all your questions. We're answering all of them. And there were a lot. Uh, Dating, phones, how our girls dress, how to build resiliency, anxiety, the mood swings, attitude changes, hormones, how their mood swings affect their memory and their confidence. And again, I'm going to link to all the resources that Sissy mentioned. See you right back here next week as we talk about it. But again, I just want you to know that you're not alone in this and we're going to get through it together as we keep talking about it. I know, I know you guys thought you were done with me, but not quite yet. I have one more thing to tell you about. If you're watching on YouTube or you're listening on your favorite podcast platform, don't forget to subscribe to the show. I don't want you to miss a single beat or a single conversation. And remember, my DMs are always open. Tell me what you want to talk about.